Hello and welcome back. So in this tutorial, we are going to start a web RTC call using Jetpack Compose UI design. So the core functionality of this project is exact same as uh, my uh, native Android series. So we will just copy and paste the core functionality of this project. And still, I'm going to explain to you line by line that what's going on. But still, if you want to see that how is the code uh, being written, you can go back and check my native web or TC Android series. And so let's move to the adding mm. dependencies to build.gradle file. Uh, I'm using Hilt as usual. I'll add it right here. Go back to build.gradle file. Add uh, Kotlin capped and uh, the required dependencies here. Let me copy and paste it here. Just like this. We are using WebSocket, uh, WebRTC library, JSON, view model coroutines, uh, coroutine lifecycle scopes, and Hilt for dependency injection. So let's sync the application. Yep, everything is up and running. So let's go uh, to the manifest and add our permissions. So it's going to be internet, record audio, and camera as well. And let's add dependency injection package here. Rename it to my package. So it's going to be Hilt Android app. Let's add it inside our manifest file. My application. Perfect. Let's add other packages here. Let me copy and paste it here. I'll explain you in details. Okay, so these are the core classes that I've used inside my uh, native web or TC Android series. So I'll explain all of this uh, in a moment. And I'll have a new view model here called main view model. It's going to be annotated by Hilt view model, also injectable, and it will have the constructor. So this one is going to extend from a uh, view model class of Android lifecycle. And inside my main activity, I'll annotate it as Android entry point. And here I'll instantiate it like this private val main view model of type main view model. And it's going to be instantiated by view models just like that. Okay, so now let's move inside our packages and see what do we have here. So we have a circuit repository which is our circuit client. It's a singleton and injectable, simply usable inside our other classes. We do have an init function, also a send message to circuit. So using this init function, we will start instantiating our uh, WebSocket clients using the local host URL that we are using at the moment. And also there are few functions that we are overriding from the abstract class. The open, whenever the circuit is connected and opens, this function will be called. So we will send a message to the server, to circuit server that, hey, we want to store this username. And whenever we receive a message from other clients, we will, using this interface that is here, we will uh, convert it to the message model, just like that, JSON from JSON. And using this listener that we are uh, providing uh, through this init socket, we will uh, call it and pass it to the listener of this class. Pretty straightforward. After that, we'll connect our web socket. And this uh, function is in charge of sending messages to our web socket clients using this function. So from other classes that are instantiating this circuit repository class, this function is available to send a message web socket server. So let's go to our RTC clients. In this class, we have an application, a username, uh, the registration username, a socket repository that we are uh, creating and passing to this RTC client, and an observer for observing that what's going on right now with our peer connection. So inside the init block, first we will instantiate the peer connection factory, which is the heart of everything that uh, you want to create a peer connection or other stuff. First, you have to initialize your peer connection factory. So uh, first, we create a peer connection options with this 
settings and then we will initialize uh, the peer connection factory and right after it we will create the peer connection factory uh, using peer connection factory builder we'll set video encoder factory and decoder factory for uh, video processing also some option like that's the encryption to true and network monitoring to true uh, we will create the connection factory peer connection factory and right after that we will have a function that will create our peer connection factory so you'll see we will use this create peer connection factory to instantiate our peer connection uh, lazily and down below we do have two function initialize our surface view and start local view using this initialize surface view we will start preparing our surface view renderer which we will use for our local view and also for a remote view as well and using this function start local video uh, start streaming using our camera and uh, publish our camera image inside our uh, local view of surface view render so we will get the local surface view render object using this function and first we will two object of uh, video capture and video track and then we will create our local audio track and we will create a local stream and add these two tracks to this stream and then add the stream to our peer connection so after that we do have two functions one of them is call and the other one is answer so let's dive to the call function uh, using call function we will create a media constraint and we add a key value pair of offer to receive video to true and then using this constraint uh, we want to create offer so using create offer on peer connection factory object we will have an object of uh, stp observer with four overridden functions here so whenever we successfully create a session description we use this session description and set it inside our peer connection factory as a local description so we will set this offer as our local description and also whenever this set was successful we will uh, send this session description to the other user using this circuit repository dot functionality of send a message to circuit like this creates offer and username is our username and also the target is going to be target that is derived from this function the last thing is offer which is going to be session description offer and its type and also same goes for uh, the answer object so whenever a user received the uh, offer object it's going to add the offer object like this a remote session received the user is going to add uh, the sender's session descriptions as the remote session and after that it's going to answer the call using this function and create an answer and send it back again using send message to socket with the type of create answer so this one is exactly uh, against this create offer function and whenever the sender of offer receives the answer also calls on remote session receive so he will set the session description inside his peer connection and ready up to establish the connection so after establishing the connection some ice candidate will be generated using a peer connection object and first the ice candidate generator has to add it to his own uh, peer connection and then send it to the other peer which we will see inside the class that is instantiating this RTC client and at the observer. So whenever the observer is triggering that, hey, there is an ice candidate generated, he will use that function, which is here at ice candidates. He will add it to his own client's own peer connection and then send it to other clients to uh, add it as the remote ice candidates. There are some helper functions here, switch camera, toggle audio, camera, and end call, which will uh, start some interaction with our RTC client. So I think we are good to go with explanation. I strongly recommend that you, if you don't understand what's going on here, I have explained every line of it 
I've written all of this code inside my Android native web RTC course. I strongly recommend to you to go there and watch the whole series again and come back. And let's move to the next video and start writing our codes inside our view model and start uh, negotiating between two clients. So till the next video, see you everyone.